Yes. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> So I'm going to just give it a few more minutes before I get started. Sandra's right. We have a lot to talk about today. This is um, a long time coming. And Sandra and I, if, you, if any of you are new to us together, we used to have a company together. We have um, taught together at conferences with B&H, with Adorama. We've kind of traveled a lot together teaching. And um we just never have done this one though. We've never taught school photography as it pertains to, and or artificial light as it pertains to my school photography method. We just haven't. And it's so silly because we have people in both of our communities asking us about the opposite thing. And it's like, why haven't we done this together? So Sandra, do you have anything to say about that? No, I just think it's so true. Like the, the school photography and the way that Elena teaches it, it's just like, a no-brainer that it's going to go with artificial light and being able to create your own light, especially the way I do it, the the weird Sandra Co method that I'm going to show you guys today. But it's like, remember those old commercials where it's like, somebody got chocolate in my peanut butter, somebody got peanut butter on my chocolate. And then they're like, wait a minute, it's the perfect combination. It's totally like that. Yes, totally. <laughs> Totally. Sense. And for those of you that don't know, Sandra and I are the embodiment of community over competition. We are both family photographers in the same town, literally competing for the exact same people, but not because we have different ICAs and we're both making multiple six figures with our portrait photography businesses. So if we can do it, you can do it. You don't have to worry about your competition. That's just my little soapbox about Sandra and I. I also say Sandra's my unofficial life coach. Sorry for <laughs> to hear all my my woes every every day all the time um anyways so we're excited to talk about this today if you are coming from schooled and you have already purchased the course this is going to give a little introduction into schooled and so you can just kind of sit tight for that part you already know about that and then wait for sandra to bring in her school photography stuff or um, her lighting stuff and the reason i'm doing that is because we have a lot of sandra's community here and so i really want to introduce them to the school photography class and what that entails so that you can see if this is something you're interested in um, yeah and likewise if you've already if you're already in the missing link and you know all of that we want to learn about school where you know yeah so just sit also, tight yeah. it's going to be an equal i'm going to start with about 20 minutes of from, from my side she's going to give about 30 from hers and then we'll answer some questions at the end and let you know how you can uh, join us. And of course, we're never going to lie to you. We do have full courses that we would like you to join at the end, but we want to give you a little introduction so that you can see if this is something you want to offer. All it's right. A good fit. Also, my dogs are like at my feet being very loud. So if you hear like snarfling or weird chewing noises, it's not me. <laughs> it's my it dogs. might be her, but it's I mean, maybe. All right. Just ignore them. Okay. So I'll try to pay attention to that admit all button there. I'm going to share my screen really quickly. This is being recorded. We will send the recording out to those who signed up. So um, if you come late, know that. Yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to actually kick my dogs out. Just give me a second. Go okay. for it. Come on. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to give my part of the training, which is introduction into fine art school portraits or a peek into schooled. So if you're new here, schooled is my most popular uh, class that has reached an international um, membership. And we help school or we help any photographer at really any level launch school photography start to finish. So let me tell you a little bit more about what you're going to learn today. You're going to learn what the heck a fine art school portrait is. This might not be something that you're familiar with, so I'm going to get you really familiar with that. You are going to learn how fine art school portraits can transform your business. You're going to learn who should be offering this. P.S. That's you. And you're going to learn how to get started right now. So I do always want anything that I give away for free to have a little actionable piece that you can use if you have a zero budget that you can just get going with it right away. Really quick, I want to tell you a tiny bit about me, and I'm not going to go too deep into this, but especially for those of you who came over from Sandra's community, my name is Elena S. Blair. I am an internationally recognized family and newborn photographer, and I also have this boutique school photography segment of my business. I launched this in 2012. Um, it was the first year that I was able to hit six figures, and it really transformed how I do business, how I market myself, and it was just sort of a game changer. <clears throat> I started teaching it to a global community in 2017, and I've literally seen it transform photographers' lives. I am very much still a working photographer. I do about 100 
photo shoots a year between my newborn and family work. Uh, we photograph, we're getting back up to, during, before, uh, in 2020, my um, school calendar went from doing about five a year to zero because of COVID obviously. And this year we're gonna have three schools. Um, so we are, or maybe even more, but we're gonna have about three schools this year. So we're bringing that back up. I just have brought that volume down because you know I'm doing other stuff with my business. So I'm very much a working photographer as well. I'm sorry, I'm gonna come here and knit. All right. <clears throat> I also have four kids. I uh, run the carpool. I do all of the things that and run my entire business right here in my kitchen. That is not a lie. So if I can do it, you can do it. All right. So what is a fine art school portrait? Essentially, a fine art school portrait is a better school portrait, but not just a better school portrait. Yes, the product is better in which that you're actually capturing what the child looks like. You're not capturing this weird like strange version of people's children you actually are able to capture them as a human um but it is also a better business a better experience for everyone involved it's more personal it is what i like to call boutique that being said we teach you how to do anything that any of the big box companies do that's going to be one of my one of the biggest questions i get from people who are just new to this concept yeah but these schools aren't they used to working with really big name companies and i won't use the names but you all have them in your mind yes many of them are and many of them leave those companies to come to myself or another trained photographer in this area because it is better all around so we do teach you how to do all of those things all right, if any of this sounds familiar, you can raise your virtual Smurf hand or you can just put it in the chat. Tell me if any of this sounds familiar. This is you right now. You love photography, especially photographing kids. Probably a lot of us here, right? You wanna make money doing this whole photography thing, maybe even wanna quit your day job. You can't seem to get your, your calendar booked out. For some reason, all of the marketing things that you are trying aren't working. You can't book your calendar. And you think that you're using all these strategies and they just don't seem like they're enough. Or maybe you just need a big influx of cash right now. Does any of that sound like you? If so, you're in the right place. Congratulations. And please make sure you're muted if you aren't me or Sandra. All right. So Fine Art School Portraits completely transformed my business. It was 2012. I uh, was burning the candle on all ends. I was working still as a registered nurse. I had two babies at home. I was um, not just, I could not bridge the gap financially. I had to figure this out. And so I started offering fine art school portraits. And I'm going to tell you what happened that year. First and foremost, the biggest and most surprising thing to me was the marketing piece. So I did my very first school that year, 2012, April. And with the sneak peeks that I shared, the attention that it brought to my business got me booked out through September. It blew my mind. I had never knew something like that was possible. But the other magical thing that happened, and I'm sorry that I just used the word magical, but that kind of is what it is, is that it put me front and center with my target market, which was families with young children. So all of a sudden, all of these families at that school, I but there were about 100 kids or 60 kids at that first school, 60 families now knew that I was a photographer, not just a school photographer, but one who also offered family portraits. And it changed my business. It was a boots on the ground marketing strategy. The other amazing thing that happened at that first shoot was that I made $3,000. And at that time in my business, I had not ever made a giant uh, flow of cash like that all at once. And I realized I am on to something. It was mind blowing for me. If you've never made a big like slam of, of money in your business before, I'll tell you that the first time it feels amazing. And it, it gives your subconscious a little reminder like, oh, this is actually going to work, which is pretty cool. And I just want to show you one of my past students really quick. It's not just me who this happens for. You don't have to just believe me. Um, she did a school of 240 and brought in over $23,000 from that one school last year. And she also has done fine art school portrait pop-up mini sessions that sell out in 24 hours. And that doubled her total revenue from 2020 to 2021. So it's not just me. It works for my students at well, as well. The other thing that this does for your business is it eliminates slow season. So I know that Sandra's people that are in here, you guys, a lot of you do studio work. And so you're able to work all year long. Um, me and Sandra, this is the one thing that's really funny that we're polar about this. I'm never going to have a studio. I'm addicted to golden hour light. I really do like to do my photo shoots outdoors. And so I needed a plan. You have to be a smart business person if you want this to be real, if you want this to be your full-time gig. I needed a way to eliminate slow season and school photography has done that for me. Um, so that was 
all three of those things, the marketing piece, the influx of cash, and the fact that it eliminated slow season were actual game changers for me. Um, another one of my students here, she, uh, this person made a gross 37,000 in 2020. And then last in 2021 grossed 80,000 with schools, just schools alone. So this is a significant moneymaker for a lot of people, not just me. I'm not just making this up. And the other thing that's awesome about it is it's fun and rewarding. I don't know about you, but if you like taking photographs of children, it's super fun to get in there. And it's fast. You're in and out in a couple of hours. You get to interact with all of these cute kids. And I think Sandra and I both love photographing kids. I don't ever have trouble getting kids to, to do what I want them to do in front of the camera. I don't know why. It's kind of a superpower. But I love it. I always leave my school shoots feeling invigorated and excited. And this is just another one of my students here. Her business, um, the first year, brought in $20,000 from schools alone. And the, sec and the second year, $28,000. So I'm not making this up. I just want to keep driving that point home. All right. Who should be offering this? It sounds like a lot of work. That's one of the things that people, a block that people have. Okay, so this is school photography. Like that sounds like a lot of work. Can I really do this? Can I really uh, set something up that's mass volume like this? So if you are a family photographer or a wedding photographer, this is something that you should consider. Why? Because most family and wedding photographers have a slow season. Is it a lot of work? Sure, but we literally can teach you step-by-step -step how to get it done. And I actually do the entire thing with uh, natural light, which you'll see one of my associates here working at one of our schools in natural light. And today you are going to get a little extra skill here, but you can do it with artificial light, which means that you could do it anytime, any place. And Sandra probably has been wanting to beat me over the head with this. It's pretty silly that I haven't learned how to do it yet. So I'm going to be sitting here learning this with you. But my point though, is that even if you don't want to use artificial light, you are able to execute this with a camera a backdrop and the skills that we give you to do it um, efficiently and to make a big profit on it. So I do all of this with natural light, which is why Sandra's here today to help you out. I do it all with one camera. I do it all with one lens and I do it all with one background and one background stand. So the setup is pretty minimal. But Elena, I'm a lifestyle photographer, not a studio photographer. So for those of you that are here from my, my team, you're probably wondering that. If you're from Sandra's side of the, the group here, you should have been offering this like last year, because if you already do studio work, this is basically a way for you to take your studio to schools and make a crap ton of money. So congratulations, you just got like a million dollar idea. But if you are a lifestyle photographer, you might be wondering, can I do this? I'm. How will this transform or translate over to my um, my regular type of work? The truth of the matter is that what you are capturing when you're out there capturing families on a field, just like this little guy here, is the same as if you are with a black background. Background. You are the type of photographer that captures emotion, that captures actual personalities that's able to really convey who the child is to the world with your photography. And so that can happen with a black backdrop or whatever color you choose as well. All right. So how, hold on, let's let these people in. How do I get started? So you can do this two ways. <laughs> you can take advantage of my once a year sale, spend $99 and turn this into five, 10, or even $30,000. Like some of my students, my course is on sale until, um, until Monday, or if you have a zero budget, which I get, I have been there. Here's what you should do right now to get started. Here are some things that you can do right now to start doing this in your business. You need to build your portfolio. And why do I say you have to start with that? Because when you go to schools to offer them this, you have to have an example to show them. Because when you go to a school and say, I'm a school photographer, they're going to think of that stiff, boring, old school portrait that you know we all grew up used to. You have to have something to show them. And I want you to know that when I first started, all I had was a black piece of felt that I had in my closet from a Halloween costume. Kid you not, guys, I am scrappy. Or I did it with a white wall. This is my daughter in front of a white wall. <laughs> so I went out and I was able to get a portfolio built with my own children and their friends in my house. So you definitely need to have examples of this and you need to do that quickly. Then that next little piece of advice I'm gonna give you is that you have to start where you already have connections or you should. Don't reinvent the wheel. I'll have students who are like, I don't know who to reach out to. And I'm like, well, are your children in any preschools? And they're like, yeah, but I feel a little weird asking my kids preschool. Don't. 
that's how I started. I did it at my kiddos preschool. That was the first place. And if you don't have children in preschool or school age kids, or even teenagers, you could start asking your cousins, your aunts, your friends, your anyone who you know, who has children say like, Hey, does your school have a photographer? If not, can I get in touch with them? Or even can I just get in touch with your school? Cause I've got a better offer than what you're already using. I can almost guarantee it. Another thing that you can do too, is you can offer a fine art mini session pop-up to get some experience with volume. So if you're not ready to work in a school yet, you could say, all right, I'm going to open up 10 to 20 session spots. Um, and I'm going to get practice working with kids and a small, on a larger scale that has to be quick. Cause each session, each time that we spend with a kid is like a minute and a half. It's really fast. So you can do that as well. And we have a bonus on, on, we actually have a free course that you can watch that shows you how to do that. We also have a bonus in the course that shows you how to do that as well. So like I said, school is on sale right now for $99 for the entire month of September, which is today as the last day, but we are going to be um, ending the sale Sunday nights. So you have all weekend. All right. So what exactly will you learn in this course? You will learn how to build a portfolio quickly. You will learn how to create relationships with schools of all sizes. I've worked with schools with 20 kids and worked with schools all the way up to a thousand kids. So this works with all volume. Um, you'll learn the equipment needed, photo day prep, technicalities on photo day, like lighting, camera gear, settings, et cetera. Not artificial lighting though. If you do that, you got to talk to Sandra. How to work with large volume efficiently, file organization, how to edit quickly, how to present proofs to families, what to charge, how to fill large volume orders, how to package it up, how to turn this offer into a marketing machine for your business. That's the biggest win in my opinion. You're basically going to learn everything that you need to know. Um, you also get all of my email templates, pricing model templates, and contracts. So why should you buy this right now? I'm on the fence. You should buy it right now because it's only $99. It's about to go up to $397. So if you even are sort of considering this, it's basically free right now. So you really should buy it right now, um, even if you're going to put it on the shelf for a couple of months. Here's some of my students' work just as examples. And I just want to show you, we do have students that use different colors of backgrounds. So if you're not into the black background, totally fine. Um, and one of the biggest advantages of my course is the Facebook group. Our Facebook group is probably one of the most positive places and act places that I've ever seen on Facebook. Um, and there are folks in there giving advice all the time. It makes me, I, I get uh, ideas in there and advice as well. So it's a really, really positive place. And that's one of the advantages. And the other thing that you I want, uh, I want to point out is that you get lifetime access anytime you join this class. So any updates that happen, you will get those for free. You will always be able to access the course. If we move to another platform, which I've done a couple of times, you can go move over with us to the other platform. So you get lifetime access. So that is what school photography is. I wanted to give Sandra's community a little bite-sized um, intro into that because Sandra and I always say like these two things go together like bacon and eggs. Like they are really just kind of meant to be. And I don't teach artificial lighting. So I'm going to let Sandra take it away so that she can give you, she literally wrote the book on artificial lighting. So she's kind of actually an expert. So, um, <laughs> That's what I like to tell people. Actually, let me just, since I, that was about 20 minutes, let me just, uh, if there's any questions about school photography right now from which any of you would like to raise your hand, you can ask me and then we'll, and then we'll, does that sound good, Sandra? And then we'll move yeah, on. Absolutely. Okay. And you can, uh, it's for us, since there's so many in here, which is really exciting. Um, you just uh, raise your hand for us so that we can keep track. We actually. Oh, might... it's Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Hi, hey. Wendy. Hey. Go ahead and ask a question. I'm going to make you a host, Sandra. Thank Hi. you. So um, is there a seasonality for. So we'll just have two videos. We're going to have to merge those videos together so we can share yeah. them. Um, so, so I'll let Wendy... Elena answer that. That's an excellent question. And the truth, the, the answer is that there is not a season for school photography, actually. So, and the other thing is, I meant to say this during the presentation, my school photography business, my own one right now, in the last week, we received two inquiries for two schools and put two schools on the calendar. My associate, Rachel, is going to photograph them for us. That's an extra about if, if we get our average sale, which our average is pretty normal, like it's, it happens almost the same every time we're going to make 10 to $15,000 that we weren't even planning to make this year. So there are some schools that prefer it in the fall. That is the truth, which can be a little bit frustrating for those of us that are family photographers, but I have found that most smaller schools are totally fine doing it in the winter or spring. And so I do the bulk of my schools between the months of uh, February and March, or February and April. So it is not seasonal, actually. Uh, it, like, littler okay. schools don't need like 
they don't need um, IDs and that kind of thing. So they're okay with you doing it on, in the winter months. And I imagine okay. private schools would be like that too. Yep, exactly. It just really depends on the school. And most times you can talk, like if it's a smaller school, we'll say, well, how about we do it in the winter when it's like, you know, and they're usually like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's no big deal. So, oh, uh, Wendy, this would be such a good fit for your work. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I was already thinking about doing school photography before I even knew about this webinar this week. So this came at perfect time. Yay. Look at that. It's kismet. I think we maxed out. I think a hundred, hundred might be the max, Sandra. I just Woo -hoo. Uh, Sandy, your hand is up. Hi there. Great. Hi. Uh, question. Do you find that you need an assistant or someone to help wrangle the kids, check off their names? How does that work? That's an excellent question. And just so you know, we do walk you through all that in the course. It depends on the size of the school. Personally, for me, if the school's over 40 kids, I like to bring an assistant. Most schools will, so I, I, it's really awesome. We're actually doing this right now, like negotiating with a school. So uh, I know exactly what this conversation is like in real time. Most schools that are a little bit bigger, they'll start, they will offer you a, a parent assistant. So a lot of them will say like, we can get a volunteer parent to come in. I have not had very good luck with that. The parents just don't know what to do. So I prefer to pay an assistant to help me. I just pay them hourly to be in there to wrangle the children so that I can be completely in charge only of photos. Um, but the other thing though, that we teach you in the course is you have to be really prepared prepared before photo day, have all of the name cards done, know, um, have a working schedule with the school so that you know what class is coming at what time. You really need to be the professional so that you're in control and it runs really smoothly. But I Great. do like Thank to be my own assistant. You're welcome. Thanks. Michelle? Hi, uh, thanks a lot for this course, by the way. Mm. Forgive my ignorance, but what exactly is a pop-up? I mean, I know what pop-ups are, my kid go to them, but... <laughs> Pop-up is just a term that we use as uh, for something that's not every day. So like, for example, I don't have a studio. So if I was going to do a mini session event, it would be like a one-time thing and pop-up basically means one-time thing. Okay. Like, so I, something like a mini session, in other words, yeah. and, and this exactly. would be held at the school or something that you no, do not ever. It would not be held at the school if you're doing it for people that aren't just at the school. The pop up okay. thing is a total, and we, that I would do. And we'll talk. I have a free course that helps you that, but you can do it. You can rent a studio. You can do it at a church or community center. You can okay. do it. A lot of my students actually do it in their garage. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, it's just a okay. I understand. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Hi Connie. One more question. I'm gonna answer from Connie, and then I'm gonna let you take it over, Sandra. Hi, Connie. Connie, kind of, you're muted, babe. Oh. We can't hear you. Unmute yourself, Connie. Okay, here we there go. There you go. Hi. Hi. Good to see you, Sandra. Um, I'm wondering, like the schools here, they do like pictures like every six weeks. I mean, it, it's crazy. So how do you compete what? with that? I've never, that that's literally never happened in my 15 years of being a photographer. Have I had someone say that? So I don't think that that's that common. Where do you live? Every um, outside of Houston, Texas. Every six weeks, that uh, seems a little crazy. I personally- or, No, it's every quarter, every quarter. I'm every sorry. Quarter. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. So I do have students um, that will do school photos twice a year. They'll do a fall and a spring photo shoot. Um, mm -hmm. and they, they, they perceive that as a huge bonus because they're able to make the money twice. Um, so it's up, it would just be something that I would take as a case by case basis. I don't have any schools that have ever asked me to do it more than once a year. Um, so I would just take that on a case by case basis and just say like, okay, yes, I want to do that. And I will take this as a double income hit or no. So no, what I mean is they already have photographers coming in quarterly. So mm -hmm. how do I get, I mean, I, I don't want to do it quarterly. No, but just to, you know what so I mean? There are especially I know that you live in an area where there are a lot of people and in mm -hmm. every but like in our town for example in Seattle yeah sure there's schools that have people they're working with there are tons that don't for example we had two schools that just reached out to us this past week so you just have to find uh, the right types of schools to reach out to and we definitely help guide you through that but the thing that we have found as well is that when you go with a good strong portfolio schools will leave the big box companies to work with you that okay. is something and i don't know if any of my students are in here to like it, you would be surprised how that happens usually they're sick of the product the parents aren't happy and the service like the the actual interaction is not as mom and pop right it's not like a real human running a business it's like this right. 
corporation and so they're ready to leave so you just have to to branch out and to be brave enough to stand up and say i think that i that you should choose me for this okay that sounds great thank you you're welcome. Great. All right. Listen. If there's more questions for me while Sandra's talking, feel free to type them in the chat and I will I will directly answer you there um, if I can. And uh, for now, I'm going to let Sandra take it over. Well, hey, well, hey. Uh, that was great. Super inspiring, Elena. Now I'm like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> this is what happens every time we watch like, each other speak. We're like, I, Ooh, I should do that too. That was so I know. Great. I'm like, maybe I should do many sessions. <laughs> All right. I'm going to mute and let you take it over. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, can you guys see that? Everybody see that okay? You can just let me know in the chat. I'm going to, what happened? And you, right. are, you are recording, right? Just want to make sure. Yes. Okay. I am recording. Well, now I'm going to double check that I'm recording because you freaked me out. Yep, I'm recording. Okay, here we go. <laughs> It's like when you leave the house, you're like, did I turn the stove off? I don't know if I turned the stove off. Okay, so for those of you who I've never met before, I'm Sandra Cohn. Um, I am an award-winning newborn family photographer. I'm an industry educator. I'm actually a certified teacher. So I went to like teacher school to learn how to teach people. Um, I'm a proud top West Cop pro and a best-selling author. I've done a lot of things. And for um, the first 12, I'm going actually into my 24th year of business this next year, which is a long time. And so for the first 12 years of that, though, I worked exclusively with natural light. So I totally get where you're coming from as a natural light photographer. Um, I did it too for years. It was something I was really proud of. But what I found as a studio photographer, somebody who lives and works in Seattle, Washington, is that being working exclusively with natural light was causing a lot of problems in my business. So when I had perfect light and everything was gorgeous, I could show up and create really gorgeous, beautiful photos, the kind of photos I was sharing on my website and my portfolio, the kind of photos my clients expected from me. But as soon as it was, as it was like a dark day or I was in a less than ideal situation, I was still working in clients' homes at that time. Um, I couldn't. And so it caused me a ton of stress. I would try to book around the calendar, book around the time of day, book around the weather. And it just was causing a lot of problems in my business. So I knew, a part of me knew that in order to solve those problems, I needed to learn how to use a flash and a strobe, um, all those things. But the problem was I didn't like the look of artificial light. And you can just tell me if you agree with that. I just didn't like the way it looked and the way that uh, strobes and flash are traditionally taught just didn't fit with my style. I didn't want that kind of a setup, right? I work with families and small kids, not models. And I needed something that I could use in small spaces because at the time I had this really tiny in-home studio. I wanted something I could work with in small spaces that I could take on location or to take into clients' homes if I needed to. I was really just wanting something that felt as easy to work with as working with a window, something that allowed me to work and it's stress-free anytime, anywhere and create consistently beautiful results. That was my goal. So I asked myself, I was like, Sandra Cohn, how can I create my own light in a simple way with minimal gear so that my schedule and my revenue is no longer tied to the weather? And I did what a lot of photographers do, which I started searching the internet, right? I went to YouTube to try to figure it out. And everything that I was told from doing that was saying like, you need to buy a ton of expensive gear and set up one of those huge studio spaces. Like you see all those, I'm sorry, but mostly man photographers do on YouTube right? I didn't want to do that. That was not my style that did not appeal to me. So instead, I just decided to create my own method. I had called the Sandra Co method. <laughs> so original. But this is the method that really helped me replace my dependence on window light, my dependence on natural light. And it just allowed me to create what I call my own portable window. And best of all, it makes it possible to use lighting in a way that's really budget friendly that doesn't require a huge space, but still gets really beautiful results. Now, I'm going to be honest, what I'm gonna teach you today, the way I approach lighting, it breaks the rules. It goes against the way lighting is traditionally taught. And I'm okay with that because the results speak for themselves. I've created my signature style. I've built a multiple six-figure business doing this. And I've taught literally thousands of photographers around the world to do the same. So I'm gonna break it down for you now. Here we go. So. The Sandra Cohn method is really comprised of three core elements. So you've got your setup, you got your settings, and you got your style. 
So the setup, this is the part that we take the overwhelm out of purchasing equipment. What I know from teaching this as long as I have is that the equipment piece, what to buy, how to set it all up, that's probably the thing that stops most photographers. I don't want that for you. So we really work on taking the overwhelm out of that. Next, we get into settings. So this is where you're going to be able to eliminate your guesswork, looking at the back of your camera so that you're getting perfect images every time you hit the shutter without needing to know a ton of uh, technical gear or confusing language. It's also going to cut your editing time in half. And I think this is really important for a situation where you're doing high volume. So like a school school shoot. So you're not having to check the back of your camera constantly. You're not having to second guess it. And literally you can just batch edit the whole thing because your light is so consistent. And then we get into style. So the style piece, this is where you really build consistency while creating that signature style that's going to help you stand out in a saturated market, reduce your stress, improve image quality, and, and improve your sales overall. So let's get into it and break that down further. And I'm going to start with style because I think this is the part we can all really relate to. You know, as photographers, we know light's really important to what we do, obviously, right? You cannot do your job without it. And most of us have an ideal kind of light, the kind of light that if we were like magical light fairies and we had a magic wand and we could create perfect light for ourselves every single time we would do. And we love having that perfect light. Whatever it is for you, it can be different, right? Like I love light and airy. Elena's dark and moody. Like a lot, everybody has a different kind of light that they love, that they would like love to work with every time. And when you have that perfect, Perfect light, you can create those, you know, consistently beautiful images. You, you attract clients that want that because you, you share those images everywhere. And then more clients, of course, means more money doing what you love. Well, what's wonderful about using a strobe and a flash is it, it turns you into that magical light fairy. Okay. So it gives you the ability to create your ideal light every time you pick up the camera. Only now you can do it even without the sun. That's a huge deal. When you can create consistently beautiful images with or without the sun, what that means is that you do start attracting clients, but now you can do it year round, eliminating the slow season, right? So even if you're, you know, if you're using this in your schools, that's great because what if you walk into a school and they put you in the basement or you know, you're in a, a room that has horrible light, you can do it year round, but you can also bring it into your regular portrait business, which is really, really impactful. And of course that means more money doing what you love. But the one thing that artificial light is going to give you that you will never get when you work exclusively with natural light is the ability to schedule, build a schedule around what works for you, around what works for your family and your clients, not around the time of day or the weather. And that's a total game changer, like, because we all know how this works, right? When you're trying to build a schedule as an exclusively natural light photographer, you're limited to time of day because the sun does set right? And you're limited to what's going on with the weather. Even if you work inside, if it's a super dark rainy day, you're not going to have great window light. And that means oftentimes rescheduling, canceling sessions. It means that you're limited to the amount of clients that you can work with. And honestly, it just puts a cap on your income. We don't want that. But when you know how to work with natural light, when you know how to use the sun, and then you can recreate whatever that signature style is for you, with a strobe or a flash, then you're unstoppable, right? Then you're no longer limited by the time of day. I did an entire uh, photo shoot for Kodak and we were doing it at eight o'clock at night in the middle of the winter in Seattle. And that's like the power of doing that. You're no longer limited to you know what's going on with the weather. You're gonna be able to serve a lot more clients. It's gonna make you happy. You're not gonna have the stress of trying to figure out like what's happening outside. And that just means more money in your bank. And so we see this all the time inside of our community. So this is Carrie. She shared in the community after learning how to create her own light, she added 38 more sessions to her calendar just from that one more, that from that learning that one skill. So I don't know what she charges, but we can run it through my numbers. So my sitting fee for a weekday session is 425. I also sell digital files. Everybody buys digital files. Most people buy an album, but we'll just go with the digital files. All right. And so if you just took those two numbers and multiplied that by 38, that's over $40,000 a year in revenue from learning one skill. And like I said, we see it all the time in the group. Um, that's a lot of money. <laughs> 
so when, when she posted that, I was like, wow, that's amazing. And she's like, yeah, total game changer. Best of all, no more slow season. This is Kate. She's also in our community and she was able to bring in over $5,000 in four hours um, in the middle of a dark Chicago winter with her, her Santa mini sessions, you know, she can also work in clients' homes now. So this is a session she did in a client's home um, in their nursery. There were no windows at all. And she was able to create this beautiful light. So it really is powerful. And if you look at those numbers with those numbers that Elena just shared with you about, you know, school photography and increased revenue in school photography, I mean, your growth is like exponential, right? So maybe you're thinking like, yeah, this sounds great, but the equipment part freaks me out. Could you guys just raise your hand really quick if the equipment part freaks you out? So I can see, yes, I'm seeing lots of hands. If the equipment part freaks you out, look at all those hands going up. If this is the part that freaks you out, you are not alone. Like I said, this is probably the number one thing that scares photographers about artificial light. And it's no wonder, it's overwhelming, right? There's strobes and there's flashes and there's continuous light and there's umbrellas and, and soft boxes of all shapes and sizes. And then there's things you don't even know what they are, right? There are things called like stoops and barn doors. It's like, what the heck is that? So it can be really overwhelming really fast. I get it. But that's where the Sandra Co method really shines because the Sandra Co method does not require a ton of expensive equipment. And that is because we are not trying to recreate this kind of huge studio. That's not our intention. We're just trying to recreate the, the, the kind of light we get from a window, right? Only now we're building a window that we can put into it, put on a stand, plug into a wall and have complete control over. And to do that, you do not need a ton of gear, all right? So you need a stand, which you probably already have lying around. You need a light. And let me tell you, an old, that old, you know, speed light flash, like I have one right here. Just an old speed light flash that you have sitting in your closet, that'll work. You do need a modifier, so that's like an umbrella or a soft box. You need a set of triggers. The triggers are the things that are gonna help your camera talk to your light, so when you hit your shutter, your light fires, you need that. And you need a light meter. And if you're a digital photographer, this is optional. All right, so if you're a film photographer like me, you absolutely need a meter, it's your eyeballs. But if you're a digital photographer, you don't. So this is my entire setup. And I'm sure you guys, this, my weird use of the, of the shoot through umbrella is all over the internet now. I'm sure you've seen it. There's reasons why I use that, um, that I go into detail in inside the class, but this is my entire setup. So it's not that big. You can take it with you. You can, you can, we, I've actually done this setup in a closet before and created a little studio in a closet. And if you're worried about money, there's, like I said, you can use the gear that you have also source used gear. So the first light I ever invested in was a used alien B strobe that I got off of eBay for like hundred dollars. Wasn't that expensive. Now I use Westcott lighting. Um, and I've upgraded. I love that how small, how light they're, um, battery powered. So it's really convenient because I work with kids, but you don't have to. In fact, if you're willing to source use gear, I just did this quickly while I was preparing for today's talk. I just got on the internet, quick search. You can really get started for under $400, under $300. We have people in our community that are getting their entire setup started for around 200 because they're sourcing used gear. And so is there an investment involved? Absolutely but not a huge investment. And it doesn't matter anyway, because you're gonna be making gobs of extra money from all those extra clients you can see. So uh, you got this. So the, the point is don't let the equipment part freak you out. Don't let that stand in the way. All you're doing is creating a portable window that you can carry with you. And so really just keep it simple. So this is Beth. I wanted to show you guys this because I know in Elena's community, we have a lot of lifestyle photographers. So Beth is a lifestyle photographer um, and she was able to take her lights into her client's home, create these gorgeous photos for them, of them sitting in their bed. And if you look here, you can see her light. So it's not even that much, right? Like, so she has a stand, she has a light. She's using a technique that I teach inside my program, The Missing Link on how to bounce light off a window to mimic natural light. And she was able to create these gorgeous photos for her clients. Simple, simple, simple. It's what it's all about. I tell the people in my course, if you can work with the sun shining through a window, 
you can work with a bulb shining through a soft box. All right. Same rules apply. So next question. So now that you know that what equipment you need, you're probably wondering how to use it. And that's where we get into settings. So again, this is where the Sandra Co method is really, really very different from the way lighting is traditionally taught. Because if you are getting on YouTube, even if you're going to some classes or conferences or whatever, you're learning about lighting, traditionally photographers are taught that if they're going to work with a strobe or flash, they really need to know all about things like ratios. I don't know if you guys heard that. People love talking about ratios. It involves math. Um, inverse square law, also complicated math stuff. They're going to talk about gradients and fall off and fill and all this stuff that's very complicated, very confusing. And it honestly just leaves photographers to making a lot of mistakes. It's overwhelming. And so people tune out. And so instead, they go and they crowdsource settings. So I see this all the time people going into Facebook groups or whatever, asking other photographers for what their settings. I can see Elena nodding her head. You've seen this too. Friends. I just got asked that today. Yeah. <laughs> and got on my soapbox and was like, it's not, it's not going to be It's not, it's not going to help. Listen, asking other people for their settings are not going to get you the same results. Okay. This is my life coach coming in that you know, is telling me about a little tough love here. Okay. We all work in different locations. We work with different equipment. We have different styles. Okay. So instead of asking for other people's settings, let's empower you with the ability to find your perfect settings. Every time you pick up your camera based on your unique style and your unique work. Thank you for the slow clap. Elena Blair, right? Like I am just preaching. And in the, with the Sandra Code method, how we do that with artificial light, it's a really simple two-step system that builds on what you already know about working with artificial light. And it does not involve technical gear and it does not involve complicated concepts or math. You're welcome. So with our method, what you need to know is this. You need to know how you like to shoot when you're working with window light. So do you like shooting wide open? Do you like, you know, a shallow depth of field? Do you like to stop down? We're going to start you with that. And then know the kind of quality of light that you like to work with. So are you somebody who likes really soft light? Do you like hard light? Do you like light and airy? Are you dark and moody person? Like we start with those questions, start there, and then we just reverse engineer it. So based on your answers, we're going to reverse engineer um, your perfect settings for your desired look by learning how to properly meter and honestly, just by using your eyeballs. All right. It really is that simple. And what's great about this is once you learn how to do it, then it becomes a fail proof system for perfect settings every single time. And don't just take it from me. These are things that I hear from my students all the time, you know, where Katie's like, yeah, it's pretty much foolproof. It's really so easy, friends. This is uh, Cindy, and she was like that. You know, she she stayed away from lighting for years because it felt technical and all these terms and buttons. But we don't do that with the Sandra Cohn method. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. Now, what's the best part of this is that once you learn it, it doesn't take that long. It makes it easy to get amazing results straight out of camera, even if you've never worked with strobes and flash before. So you've always been terrified of artificial light. You've never worked with it before. Most of the people who come to my program, that is them. And these are the results we see people getting the first time they've ever used it. So this is uh, first time ever using strobes and flash. First time ever using artificial light. She took it into her client's home, did an entire family session, um, first time ever using it. All right. First time ever using artificial light, first time ever using artificial light. So it's really exciting. Oh, thank you, Connie. So the Sandra Crow method really does empower you to create your version of perfect light, whatever that's going to be. So if you want to be light and airy, be light and airy all day long. If you want something dark and moody, you can be dark and moody. But the difference is, is that you get to decide how your work looks, not the weather, and that's the game changer. So my big takeaway that I wanted to share today is that you really can have your perfect version of ideal light without depending on the sun, without a ton of expensive equipment, without knowing a ton of technical terms. 
and hard concepts. And I just like, the reason why I was so excited to share this with you guys today with the lameness community, because like the benefits that this gives you just in your normal portrait work is huge, but taking it into schools and just having the efficiency. I was a kindergarten teacher for years. So I am very, I know very well, little kid energy, especially in high volumes and what that is. And so just the ability to have something to set up, to not worry about it, to not even think about it. And then just bust out where you can just focus on the children in front of you and, and deal with a high volume situation. It is going to be a game changer. So the real question is, does that sound like something you want, right? Are you ready for that? And if it is, then great, because that's exactly what I teach inside of the missing link. So what I like to tell people is the missing link is my lighting course. It's basically like lighting in a box. So it's everything you're going to need to know to create natural looking light with strobes and flash. All right. So I'll just go through it really quick. And then I see some questions coming in and we'll get to that. But basically, once you're inside, we have three main parts to the program. The first part is where we're going to go in and we're going to build your foundations. So we're going to get you to the point where working with a strobe or a flash feels just as natural as we're working with a window. We're going to take the guesswork out of setups and setting. We're going to give you the ability to troubleshoot a tricky lighting situation. And this is huge. So like I said, if you walk into a room, you have perfect light, you already know how to do that. But now when you walk into a room and you don't have perfect light, you know how to do that too. All right. And here, I'm going to just drop the link really quick for people while um, we're getting started. That's gonna build your confidence. It's also gonna reduce your stress. So part two of this of the program, that's where we go in and gather your gear. It's where you're gonna start getting your, your equipment, all right? Where you're gonna, we're gonna eliminate uncertainty that comes with purchasing equipment for you so that you're insured to be only purchasing what you need. We don't want anybody wasting money on equipment they're never gonna use, okay? We're gonna help keep you in your budget and set you up for success. So remember these people, who had like perfect lighting first time ever, we want that for you. And then once you're through that and you start implementing it, that's where you get to the mastery level. And when you're in mastery, what happens, this is like the really fun part, is now you're just consistently creating portfolio worthy images every single time you show up, okay? No matter where you are. It's gonna build, help you build that trustworthy brand and it's gonna help you to develop a signature style. Now, I know this is not a business and marketing class, but you know, creating that kind of signature style, creating that kind of consistency in your work is really like the foundation for building a trustworthy brand that's going to stand out in a saturated market. All right. You're also going to be able to schedule based on your needs and not the weather. Huge. Book more clients, serve more people doing what you love. So remember our friend Carrie here with those extra 38 clients a year. I want that for you. Now you have lifetime access to the program. All right. But most of our clients get to the mastery phase in seven days or less. They get through the program in seven days. Not even kidding you. And we know that this is such a big deal. And so we celebrate it. When you get to, when you finish the course in that seven day window and you let us know, I personally am going to buy you a Starbucks. <laughs> we send a lot of Starbucks cards in the missing link because we just love celebrating wins. So we also have a ton of amazing extras inside the program. You're going to learn about sync speeds and settings equipment. We have downloadable lists on um, how to set it all up, where to place it. I'm going to teach you how to meter properly, um, all about modifiers, feathering your light and working with large groups, which is huge. So basically the entire Sandra method, but we also have bonus lessons. So we have bonus lessons on processing your digital files and actually Elena has been on me to do this for years, but I'm working with Image Salon right now, and they're creating a Sandra Cohn preset that we're going to give to the people in the missing links. So when you use the lighting and the preset, you're going to get that real consistent look. Um, we're going to teach you how to work with speed light flash, all about bouncing light. So you don't even need a modifier if you don't want one, how to work in clients' homes, building and marketing your photography business and brand. We have community and support. We have a private Facebook group that's also very active. You can ask me any question. I'm an open book. Um, network with other photographers around the year. Have access to me and my 20 plus years of experience as well as my team. Now in that group, we do two live Q&As per month where I come on and do a Facebook live. You can ask me anything. 
And I also do setup and studio reviews. So once you do get your setup done and it's set up and you want some input, like this is what it looks like in my school, this is what I'm doing. Um, can you give me some feedback? I'll come in and, and give you some feedback on that. So best of all, we have two options. You can get started today for $99 and that is a payment plan. So you'll do 99 today, 99 next month, or you can do um, the one payment. I will say that we are getting ready to, um, to raise the price. We're, we're doing some updates to the program. So that's coming in the next month or so. So you get in today, you get grandfathered in and you get all of those updates and all of that. All right. So I'm going to just admit another person and take a couple questions because I see some hands up. So, so right now, basically, if you, her class is 297, right? So one, 197 right now. Oh my God. It's, it's a screaming deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, school is normally 297. It's on sale right now. It's actually going up starting on the second to 397. So right now you get, if you get both of the classes, you're basically getting two for one. I mean, that's a screaming deal. We're giving them away. <laughs> I mean, like, it's like yeah. you get a class and you get a class. Yeah. Like the Oprah class. And I hope what you see here is that we're not just teaching you our methods. We're teaching you how to make money. And that's, if you want this whole thing to work and you still want to be here in 10, 20 years, like she and I, you got to make some money doing it. Yeah. So. Absolutely. So I'm going to open it up to Q&A. I see one really quick and I'm going to take the hands. Somebody asked, can you do this with continuous lights or just strobes and flash? I do not recommend continuous lights. Actually, <laughs> Elena helped me demonstrate why sometime. But first of all, continuous lights are really, really bright to get them to the level you need. And they can be really uncomfortable for kids to sit in front of. You're going to get a lot of squinting. Um, they're also really hot. They don't freeze motion. It's just like, I know they seem easy because they're always on like a window, but you're going to get much better results with a strobe or a flash. So I do recommend that. Um, so Kylie, I see your hand up and then we're going to go Sterling and then we're going to go next. You want to unmute yourself and ask your question if you're still there? Or maybe that's an old hand up. She may not be there anymore. Oh, okay. No worries. All oh, right. Sterling. Hi, I'm Sam. Sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> my yeah. Zoom said Dexter for the longest time because my son used it during COVID. So. Uh, I, um, thank you so much ladies for doing this is really awesome. I'm a mastermind student of Elena and I'm like, I don't know, I can't worship the ground she walks on, but when she told us that you were coming, I was like, you know what, as a natural light photographer, I do feel really weak with, um, lighting, artificial lighting. My specific question to you is because I want to eventually uh, move my business to more of a wedding photographer sort of capacity. Um, it's the lighting that you teach. Would I be able to make that more portable to use at like, let's say a reception? Yeah, I don't teach reception lighting for, you know, with if you need like multiple lights, like, but I will tell you that inside the missing link, we have a ton of wedding photographers and I see them using it all the time for those tricky situations, like in getting ready rooms or doing family portraits or those sorts of setups. And it will absolutely work for that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, when you're continue, I just want to answer this question. So somebody, uh, Jocelyn asked, when you're continuously shooting, will the flash keep up? That's why I recommend strobes. Um, the newer flashes, like I have the Westcott FJ80 here. I had it at home because I'm doing some in-home shoots to update the course. Um, super fast. It's really fast. A speed light will be a little slower. But um, if you're looking for something to really keep up with fast shooting, then I would get, I would look at a strobe versus um, a speed light. So Nick, I see your hand up. Um, yeah, I was curious if you went over anything for um, outdoor um, lighting and whatnot. Uh, we're looking at more schools doing our spring shoots uh, outside instead mm -hmm. of um, indoors. Yeah. So what's great about light is once you learn how to do it, the fundamentals, remember how I was telling you, like teach week, first we teach you the fundamentals. When you have those fundamentals, you can, you can do whatever you want. So we have people all the time that do the exact Sandra Co method, but they're doing it out in a yard or they're doing it, you know, on sites, so you can take it, it can translate into anything you really want it to. So that's why it's like learning those fundamentals is so important because it really does give you that ability to create any lighting situation you find yourself in. 
Does that answer your question? It does a bit. Um, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> It's really nice. And what's nice, even if you're shooting outside in that situation, what it's going to do is give you consistency. So like, you know, that the light that you're getting, you know, on your clients is going to be the same. You're going to have complete control over it. So in that situation, it's really going to cut your editing time in like half. Actually, I have a, I have this thing. I'm still sharing my screen. Um, one of our members shared that she was like, I was expecting the lighting to be much better. What I didn't expect was the significant reduction in editing time. It's really amazing. And especially if you're doing a volume like school stuff, that's going to be a game changer. Oh, to totally. I mean, we, we already use artificial lighting for everything. And I mean, there's no way we could do it without it. If we had to edit it all, I mean, we're mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. 2000 images a day. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. yeah, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, no, no. yeah, you need you want that for that. So yeah, the Sandrico method works outside as well. Great. Yeah. And then Alina, oh, she's gone now. All right. Uh Sandra. Yeah. Oh no, no you're sorry, I'm not gone. I'm... I think you answered me the sorry. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not well, gone. You answered the question I wanted to, but Thank oh, you. okay. Okay, sure. Um, we have another question. Shoshana says, Sandra, does your course have any Lightroom editing modules? Yeah, we do have a little section on editing digital files in there that um, that we've added. I'm working on adding more for the upgrades. And like I said, we're also going to have a preset that we're going to be adding to the course with the upgrades once that comes, which should be done in the next month or so. Hopefully, <laughs> if I can get on it. Does anybody else have any questions about um, about the lighting course or studio lighting? I'm gonna drop the link for you there one more time. I, I'm gonna go through and see. Elena, did I miss anything in the chat while I was talking? Did you notice? I've been trying to answer questions direct, uh, directly, by the way. So that's why I'm taught. If, you, if you're asking me a question, I've been getting them. Um, I think that you answered most of them. Hold on. Um, Let's saw, see. Yeah, I feel like you answered most of the questions that they were asking. It you came up and answered that. Okay. So Gigi, you said you you purchased it, but you didn't get a receipt. If you send an email to uh, Sandra Cohn Education at gmail .com, my assistant Rosie will hook you up. Sandy, I see your hand. What a fabulous name, by the way. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? Um, Olana, I love you. I have taken your classes. I just got your newborn class. And um, so I'm here learning about the lighting so I can use lighting in our uh, houses with, that don't have a lot of windows. So um, Alana, our, um, Sandra, I inherited a ton of light products from photographers that I had known. I have a lot of lighting. Uh, I have soft boxes, I have umbrellas and I don't know how to use them. So whenever I try to use them, it either looks blown out or, and I just get frustrated. So um, what I really love, I definitely want to purchase your class. And Alana, I already purchased your school class. And um, so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'd like to learn is when do you use a smaller soft box? When do you use a larger soft box? When do you use an umbrella? Do you use the umbrella that has the silver? Do you use the umbrella that has the white? Yeah. Do you go over those kind of things? Oh, yeah. All those different options? We go over all of that in Great. detail in the program. Wonderful. That's yeah. perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Do you need me to drop the link or you got it? I got it already. Thank you okay. so much. Sure. Thanks to both of you. I really appreciate um, everything you've done. You've well, I'm so excited changed to get my to career. So. Oh, so, thank you. Yeah. Love thank you. That. We really yeah. do like, we, we are artists, Sandra and I, obviously, but we're, we're business women <laughs> and we like to see our students make money. And so this is like the winning combo right here. <laughs> it's two different. We're basically telling you two different ways to make more money. Mm -hmm. So you're welcome. Go make some money. <clears throat> I love it. Um, do we have any other questions, Elena? I know you had a hard, you needed a hard out at, at 11.15. Yeah, I'm still good. I saw some time. I mean, I just feel like I need to take a moment to high five me and Elena for actually getting through our presentations. And because <laughs> we're both such talkers. Like, I know. That's like amazing. Well done. I know. We couldn't be real, real chatty. <laughs> it is a situation for sure. 
Uh, just so you know, like I said, well, actually Sandra's class is about to go up in, in, in price. So, um, and mine is going to only be on sale till Sunday at, um, midnight for $99. Um, so even if you don't think that you want to work through the lighting stuff right now or the school stuff right now, get it right now, it makes sense to get them right now because we do give lifetime access. Not all educators do that. Sandra and I both have that in common. We do give lifetime access. So even if you're going to basically put it on your digital shelf for a few months, um, you should definitely buy now. And even if you lose your link, you can email our customer support and we'll get you back in. Don't you worry. There's no weird, uh, hard outs for that. Yeah. Kelly, yeah. You got your on there. I see. Yeah. Do you want to bring Kylie's hand down, Sandra? I see somebody, Kelly, I, I see you. Hey, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Here we go. Do you know, uh, just it's down at the bottom left corner. It says, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Um, that light stand that was in there that's on wheels, is that exact light stand in the course? Yeah, we have a link to everything in the okay. course. I, I go over, so I'll show you my exact, like what I use. Um, and like I said, we're updating that, you know, with the, with the updates because I've become obsessed with everything Westcott, but, um, you know, but what I also want to say is it's not about the gear as much as it is about how you use it. And so obviously the gear that I'm using 24 years in at the place I'm in, in my career, I, I do use some higher end gear and I don't want that to free people out. So, you know, that light stands beautiful. I love that light stand. The reason I have right. it on, on wheels is because I work in a dedicated space now and it just makes it really easy for me. But um, you can make anything work. And I've even seen people in our community take a cheapo light stand that they have and just put it on casters and create the same thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sure. Yes, yeah, Susan? Hi, Sandra. It's been a really long time. I don't know if you remember, we met at PH and um, we took a walk together with your brother down. Um, oh, my gosh. Down yeah. Down yeah. Down I do remember that. Good old days when we used to get to actually go into the I, I just taught on BH yesterday and I was like, is it ever coming back, you guys? And they were like, no. They said no. Um, I know. It's so sad. I know. Anyway, um, I am really invested in continuous lighting equipment. And I just want to know, can I make it work better? Because I'm basically, I've basically been a headshot photographer for many years. And so my lighting setup is different. It's really specific to the headshots. Is and, it the Peter uh, Hurley like headshot? Yeah, set? that's yeah. me. Yeah, that's, that's me. Good. You know, so then it's very dynamic and it's very in your face lighting. But, yeah. um, which is hard for little kids. I'll be honest. Right. The, the upside of my lights is I can turn them down if I need to. I mean, they go all the way down. So with camera settings and ISO, you know, I'm hoping that I can soften it and make it work if I were going to do shooting like this. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering what you thought. Um, I think anything's possible. I think there are no rules when it comes to your work. And if you have a system that works for you and you're comfortable with, you can try it. In my experience, I have not, I have found that strobes and flash are just a lot easier when working with little kids. And the reason for that is kids will get very distracted, you know, especially I can see them sitting in front of that. Like it's going to be a little, it's a lot. Right. And so what I like about with my setup, it really is, you know, I keep saying it's a portable window. It behaves like a portable window. So like the, it's the, the way I teach you to uh, meter it, the, the power, even the settings and the setup where it sits, like the kids sit down in front of it and they don't even notice it. And so for me, I'm able to get, I feel like more authentic um, interactions and that sort of thing with that. Um, so that's why I'm a big proponent of it. If you already have a setup that you love, um, you know, you can try it out, but I think it would be interesting for you just to, you know, to see the course, to see what we're doing and maybe experiment with a little bit, or maybe even like taking one of your lights and putting it behind a modifier and trying something a little bit different with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it is just bringing, I mean, I don't know if you can see my profile picture. Yeah. Um, but it's the hot spots that I'm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's but we're, the hot spots, that's just a metering problem. We can fix that for you in about three seconds. Yay. 
Well, it's good to see you. It's so good to see you. I do remember that. That was a lovely little walk. I appreciated it, that. It was. All right. Thank you so much. You bet. Hey, it's Melissa. I know Melissa. Hi, Sandra. Hi. Um, I, I just wanted, I wanted to thank both of you. I actually, one of the very, very first photography classes I took was with Elena and I met her b &H once. I know you're not going to remember Elena, but I met you. And now I'm in Sandra's six figure studio. I also did take her lighting class. So I just wanted to tell all of you that I thought it was great. I, I had taken some other things, but it was wonderful. And I bought Elena schooled. So I'm hoping to get through that and kind of add that. Sandra knows my business. I mostly do senior photography, which is very seasonal. So I'm excited. Um, I did have one question. Maybe this is like too technical, but do you think, would you recommend like an umbrella sort of in the studio setting for a school? But I don't know about like the giant one that you kind of use a lot. Because I, I mean, I'm thinking of a particular preschool and I'm wondering if I show up like that. Although I, when my kids were at that preschool, I did, I actually brought studio lighting there and did something for a video. Yeah, but it was kids, a little the kids bit don't even pay attention yeah, they to don't the umbrella. Really. But I will say one of the updates actually just recorded this video last week. One of the updates I'm doing for the course is I'm showing people what lighting looks like with different size umbrellas because I use the seven foot. What you need to know about how this lighting course came to be is I never thought in a thousand years I'd be teaching people or writing books or whatever. I really just wanted something that would bring me consistency to my work. So I created the method literally for me. Um, but I do know that, that that size of that umbrella doesn't work for everybody. So I'm adding videos showing different okay. size umbrellas and what they, what they do, the kind of light they produce just so you can see that. So there's lots of good. Okay. I'll coming. definitely and, go back and check yeah. it out. But I wanted to say just thank you. Cause I got the email. I was like, Oh my God, this is so exciting. Like two of my favorite photographers in one place. And I, I think it's so cute how you guys are such good friends too, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sandy. Hi, one more question. Um, do you also talk about, uh, other lighting that's around like when you're shooting light? ambient light yeah I always forget that word I'm thinking of going into a school and if it's in the gymnasium and they have all this lighting or something yeah. like that to talk about that sure do perfect yeah. and Good. balancing ambient light with strobe and all of that sort of thing perfect great thank you sure Alina I see your hand up am I pronouncing your name right yes you are thank you um I don't have a mirrorless camera and I'm thinking, do I need to buy one or do you talk about what kind of camera um, you, you're using or is it working with any type of camera? I'm it, thinking it literally maybe. works with any type of camera. I use a, you know, Roloflex that was built in the fifties. I use a Canon, you know, R whatever number I can't remember, but like a mirrorless one, I use like everything in between. So it's, it's, you, it will work with any camera. And it again, like I say it all the time, but it's less about the gear and more about how you use it. So whatever you have to start, start with that. And then there's always room for growing. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, any other questions, friends? Um, Elena, this was fun. We should do this all the time. I know I miss teaching with you. I know it's been, also me. We all we have other things that can cross pollinate for sure. So we should definitely do that more. We oh yeah. And we have students who do both of our coaching programs too, which is pretty cool. So yeah. Um. Well, that was uh. It, we've been literally talking about doing this for like five years. Um. About getting our communities together. Um. If you have and and by the way, I don't know if the beginning half re um recording is. Is it, did it go to you? Because I don't see it. I think it might be when this ends, I'll, it'll. Yeah. Generate. So okay. when it ends, then we'll just like, I'll send mine to you and then, and then we'll share them. So yes. for those of you in the missing link community, I'm going to share Elena's talk on schooled in, in that community. Mm -hmm. So it'll be now part of the course, like a bonus program. And Elena, you can do the same with mine. Absolutely. We're going to put yours as a bonus. And then we will send the recordings to both, to everyone who signed up because our room maxed out. Uh, so we, I got, I'm getting a bunch of emails of people were like, I signed, I tried to get in, but the room was maxed out. So that's a bummer. Sorry for those. That well, maybe we need to do it again. 
I know, I know. I was just thinking that maybe we do need to do it again. And I probably need to be playing for a bigger Zoom for these larger classes. Um, but what we'll do is we'll make sure to send the recording. So if any of your friends are angry <laughs> that they missed out, tell them that they missed out. So they have a little FOMO, but we will um, send the recordings to everybody who signed up. So everyone who signed up will get to see the recording for sure. Uh, once we get those together um, in the same spot. So, or once you, I don't know if you're gonna put yours in, on Vimeo or what, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Well, we'll talk about it. I'll text you after, but let's definitely yeah. like, get yeah, let's those do it people again. In. Yeah. For and sure. then maybe we just do, um, yeah. yeah, we still have people trying to join. We have people in the waiting room waiting to join. Yeah. So, so, which is flattering and exciting. I'm really glad to hear that this, uh, you know, that people are, um, are interested in this. And like, you know, again, I keep bringing this home. Sandra said, this isn't a business class, but for Sandra and I, it's kind of always business. And, you know, we, we are artists first, but we also feed our children with this. Both of us are full time photographers supporting our families with this business. And it's very important that you have a plan in place um, to make yourself profitable, to make yourself sustainable. Um, and, you know, when you're going out and searching for educators, make sure that you find educators who do have sustainable, profitable business models. And that's one thing Sandra and I can really kind of pat ourselves on the back for. We do. And we want to help you with that as well. So you just learned today two different things that can boost your income. And um, I hope that you put them into practice. And I really do hope that you take advantage of this offer because mm -hmm. um, anyway, it's cheap. Cheap absolutely make yeah and somebody asked what my what we're raising the price to and we are raising it to 297 so um yeah i mean like that's huge value so with our classes combined it's like 600 dollars value for like half the price so mm -hmm. get yep. in on it and yeah it is i agree with everything elena just said like this is like these are skills but it's a business move and it's gonna only help you so do yep. it we want to see you here in 10 years, still, still being, uh, still being profitable. We don't want you to burn out. We want you to have Absolutely. a plan. Absolutely. So. If you have any questions, um, actually, Sandra, why don't you put your, um, Instagram handle here? I'll put mine as well. Let's take a picture too, before people start dropping off. I forgot. Oh, to do that. that's so fun. Uh, turn your cameras on everybody. Come on. We're good. This is your Instagram moment. Come on. Don't be scared. Hey, hey. <laughs> there's all those pretty faces. <laughs> That was so fun. That's very fun. So I am, um, let me put it here. So Sandra, Sandra Cohn on Instagram. And I'm Elena S. Blair um, underscore photography. So if any questions pop up while you're trying to make this decision in the next few days, send me a direct message. I answer all my direct messages. I know Sandra does too. I do too, yeah. Um, or if you just want to send direct, direct message and be like, hey, I'll be like, yeah, hey. if you just want to say hi, we like to. <laughs> Anyway, and we stayed on ta on time, like to the minute. So I know I'm so proud of us. Like we've really grown yeah. because. <laughs> yeah, we were really bad about that. We're um, all right, friends. All right, everybody have a great weekend. Um, I hope to see you all in the course. I hope that all of my people go into Sandra's course and that we can just really grow as a community of artists globally. Uh, so fun to see everyone's faces today. And we will get those recordings to everyone who signed up. So sit tight by the end of the day. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye.